In our next lesson on photosynthesis from chapter 16, we want to look at the possible fates of the light energy absorbed and also at the light harvesting complex. Here we have our chlorophyll at the heart of our reaction center in photosynthesis and that's depicted in our figure at the top of the screen here. It's going to absorb a photon of light and that will promote a delocalized electron to an excited state. That is a higher energy orbital and that's notated here by the chlorophyll with the asterisk. Now remember this is a higher energy state and that makes it very unstable and so it will spontaneously return to the ground state and it can do so in one of four ways. In two of these ways it returns to the ground state but we don't gain anything in the process. On the far left the chlorophyll may return to the ground state by emitting that energy as heat. Again we haven't gained anything in that process. It may also, and that's the second case here, uh, our excited state chlorophyll may return to the ground state by emitting that energy as a wavelength of light. We can never pass on 100% of the energy we receive, and so what is emitted is a longer wavelength. Remember that means less energy, and it fluoresces. So again, we've returned to the ground state, but we haven't captured any of that energy in the process. So these two processes do not relate to photosynthesis. Instead, we have two more processes, and in each of these cases, the energy is actually transferred, so we collect it in some way. In the first case, we have our excited state chlorophyll molecule, and it will pass that energy on to some molecule X. Chlorophyll returns to the ground state, and X is now in an excited state. Again, that's the asterisk. So in this case, all that's been transferred is just the energy itself and that's referred to as exciton transfer. Our fourth and final way of returning to the ground state is here's our excited state chlorophyll molecule. We pass not just the energy but an electron as well. In other words that delocalized electron gets passed itself. So here's our excited state chlorophyll molecule. Here's some mo oxidized molecule X. It's going to receive that high energy electron and become reduced, and here's our oxidized chlorophyll molecule. Refer, we refer to that process as photooxidation because we've oxidized our chlorophyll molecule, and it is as a consequence of photon absorption, hence photooxidation. So you'll notice our chlorophyll molecule is in the ground state, but in this case, in contrast to all the others, it has been oxidized, so it carries a plus charge. And so if we want to return that chlorophyll to its original form so it can absorb another photon of light, then we have to reduce the molecule. We have to add back the electron we extracted. So these two processes of exciton transfer and photooxidation, these are the ones that direct, directly relate to photosynthesis. So let's look a little bit more at exciton transfer. That relates to this process of harvesting the light. We do so by means of photoreceptors or pigment molecules as we'll review in class. These pigment molecules are highly conjugated, so they absorb light in the visible range, and the nature of the molecule will determine the wavelength of light absorbed. On the far left here, we have the protein complex, which would be the light harvesting complex, and as you can see, the protein is in gray, and the photoreceptors are colored. And so you can see it contains a number of different photoreceptors. The yellow and the green are different chlorophyll molecules, and the red are carotenoids. <clears throat> so within this protein molecule, multiple photoreceptors. Here's a top-down view. As you can see, a very symmetrical molecule, a lot of these photoreceptors, but again, they're always embedded in protein, and that will alter somewhat the wavelength that they're able to absorb. On the far left, we have a top-down view showing just the chlorophyll molecules. So here in this illustration at the heart of photosynthesis is our reaction center where photosynthesis takes place. That's our bright green circle in the center here. There are chlorophyll molecules at the heart of that that participate in photosynthesis and we'll look at that in a later video. Let's first focus on the light harvesting complexes 
depicted here <coughs> as the lighter green spheres. Their job is to absorb the photon of light and pass that energy to the reaction center. They're called antenna pigments and it works very much like an antenna except in this case instead of collecting sound waves it's collecting light energy. And remember we have multiple photoreceptors embedded in protein and that's the antenna pigments. <clears throat> the proteins in the complex act as kind of a scaffold for those pigment molecules. We have many different types of pigments or photoreceptors so that we can absorb multiple wavelengths of light. We want to capture as much of that sunlight as we can. They will pass that energy to the reaction center by means of exciton transfer and that's what's depicted by the red arrows. So again, the light harvesting complex, uh, the antenna pigments are going to collect the sunlight and simply pass that energy to the reaction center. No electrons have transferred at this point. It's solely exciton transfer, just transferring that energy. Well remember we can never pass a hundred percent of the energy we receive and so those pigment molecules that absorb the highest energy, remember that means the shortest wavelength, are the most external parts of that complex and that's depicted here. So here the P simply stands for pigment. It absorbs a wavelength of 450 nanometers and it's going to pass it to the next component but remember it can't pass on all of that energy. It will pass on a little less of the energy which means a longer wavelength. So the next component absorbs a longer wavelength of light and so forth down the line until we get to the reaction center chlorophyll A. It absorbs the lowest amount of energy the longer wavelength. But remember we have to have enough energy to carry out the process of photosynthesis and that's what limits the wavelength uh, that can be absorbed by that reaction center chlorophyll. In other words we have to have a minimum amount of energy and we can't absorb a wavelength any longer than that. It's not important you remember these individual components, only the general process. The highest energy, shortest wavelengths are the most external portions and it's passed successively to the more internal regions and the longest wavelength, lowest energy is in that reaction center chlorophyll. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the process of phot photooxidation that occurs within that reaction center specifically for photosystem 2 and we'll see why photon absor absorption occurs before oxidation. And then we'll see how that oxidized reaction center gets re-reduced.